just to go over any, everything that we learned before the fall break, because I know you've forgotten so quickly, okay? Um, you are to find a polynomial. I'm just going to start you with one just to set you up. With real coefficients that have the given zeros, one such polynomial, P of X, can be defined as they're giving you all of the answers but what the X coefficient is. So what do you have to do? You have to write X minus however many roots there are. And it looks like there's two roots, but how many roots are there, children? Three, yes. You put negative one right here, which would make it positive one. You put X minus three minus four I, that's the other root. And then where's my other root coming from? Right, remember, if you are an I, you have a conjugate. So you put three plus four I. And you're gonna have to foil this. Do you need me to foil it with you? Yeah, yeah. these are the challenging ones, so. I should have been, my bad. All right, I'm gonna write, rewrite this again. I'm gonna distribute the minus sign right here. So minus three plus four I, and then this one distribute the minus sign would be X minus three minus four I. That's all I've done. Have you ever triple foiled y'all or remember it? Okay, let me go over how to do that with you. Uh, X times X x squared. It doesn't matter how you start. I just started over here for whatever. x times negative 3, negative 3x. You all know that, right? x times 4i, 4ix. What did I tell you about all the i's, though? What's going to happen to them? They're all going to go away. So if you do this right, all of your i's should go away. All right, now we're going to do the, the negative 3, and I'm going to change colors for a reason because I don't want you to get lost in what I'm doing. So negative three times X, oh, that looks terrible, is negative three X, I'm gonna put that under here. Negative three times the middle, negative three, is positive nine, so I'm gonna put it over here. And negative three times four I would be what? Negative 12 I, not with an X, so just put it kinda off to its side. All right, and now we're gonna do the negative four I times each one of these. So negative four I times X is negative four I X. Look at that, it canceled. Negative four I times negative three is, what's a negative four I times a negative three? Positive 12 I, look at that, it canceled. And what is a negative four I times a positive 4i. What does that make? Which is? Positive 16. So let's see what we have left here now. So I have an x squared. I have a negative 3x and negative 3x that makes negative 6x. And I have a 9 and a 16 which makes what? 25. And now you're about to hate me, but now you need to actually multiply it with the x plus 1 also. Go ahead and take a moment to multiply and see if you get the correct answer. All right. So that's how you do one. That's how you're going to do most of them. That is a very difficult one. That is one that I'm actually, this, this whole worksheet came from my SPCC pre-calc class that I teach there. And this is what they have to do. They do a lot of this. So that's what I'm saying. Um, number two, you should be able to do two on your own. So I'm not going to go over that because that's when you just did something similar to the worksheet that I had just given to you. Having zeros three, seven I. And so then what's my other I? What's the other I? Okay. So I want you to write it again in three different um, factors and foil it out. All right, and then let me do three. Let me set you up with three. Find a cubic polynomial 
having the given zeros zero and four plus five i. And again, they didn't write the other i. What's the other i gonna be? Four minus five i. So if you were to write these out, you would have x minus zero. Well, what is x minus zero really? Isn't that just x, right? Okay, so you can write it as x or x minus zero. Then you have x minus this guy and minus this guy, which means distribute the negative through just like we did above. So x minus four minus five i and x minus four plus five i. And then you're gonna have to foil that out and then foil it with an X. But I'm gonna do number four with you actually right now. So set you up with one, set you up with two, three, and four. We're gonna do, I'm gonna do four with you right now. This is gonna be new for you. For the following, find the function P of the polynomial degree three that satisfies the given conditions. The zeros are negative three, negative one, and four. Okay, that sounds like something you should be able to handle. But then they gave you this extra piece of information right here. The P at negative 2 is equal to 12. What does that mean? That means when you plug in negative 2, what should you get out? 12. Okay. That's going to change up what we're about to do. You still start it the same way. I have three zeros. I'm going to write x minus, x minus, x minus. I'm going to put my zeros here, here, and here. So now I would put a negative 3, which would be plus 3 a negative one, which would be plus one, and a negative four. And you still FOIL. This whole worksheet, you are going to become FOILing masters. I know. So let's FOIL these two as quickly as we can. This would be x squared, 4x, plus three. Did you FOIL that fast? Of course you did. Now, Foil these two together. Do a triple one together now. The squares go away, huh? Minus 13x plus 12, minus 12. Okay, here's the problem. If I plug negative 2 into this right now, I'm not going to get out positive 12. What this means is there is a coefficient in front. Remember how it always says, find the polynomial with least degree. Find the poly and leading coefficient 1. Remember how it always says that? This one doesn't have a leading coefficient of one when it gives you this. When it gives you that piece of information, it actually has a different coefficient in front. So what you would do is you would actually put a little letter A in front, whatever you want, equals your P of X. So it's, it's not that hard. All it means is when you plug in negative 2, you want to get out a 12. That's what this means. When I plug in negative 2, I want to get out a 12. So I want to get out a 12 when I plug in a negative 2 everywhere there's an x. Minus 13 times negative 2, minus 12, and I want to figure out what that a guy is. What's that a in front there? That's what I'm really doing. So what's negative 2 cubed? 8, no, negative 8, right? Negative 8, this is 26 minus 12. Negative 8 plus 26 minus 12. Isn't that 6, right? So 12 equals 6a. What does a equal? 2. So here's what you had. You actually had a 2 in front of that polynomial. So your p of x would be 2 times whatever we got, x cubed minus 13x minus 12. Okay, you're gonna have to do the same concept for number 13. So write yourself a little note, look at four. Here's why. What are the zeros that they're giving you in this picture? Can you tell? Where are the zeros? The zeros, it's where it crosses the x. Negative four, two, five. And you're gonna write x minus x minus x minus. Same thing. But you see this little point right here? It says zero twenty. You see that on the graph, right? Zero twenty. What does that mean? That means when you plug in a zero, 
you should get out a what? 20. So you're going to have to do that A thing that I just showed you before. All right. I'm going to, you're not going to do this right now, but I just want you to know that that's what you're going to have to do. Look at your number four and know how to do it. You can work together in a minute on all this. No worries. Go back to this one over here. Five is really easy. It's really nice. Six. Do you see square roots right here? You're going to find a polynomial, coefficient one, yay, least possible, with the following. I'm going to do six over here because I need room. X minus, X minus, how many are there? Three? X minus. So I'm going to put five here. What would go here and here? Three plus square root of five and three minus square root of five. And you're going to have to do exactly what we did in one. You're going to have to distribute that negative. So x minus three minus the square root of five, x minus three plus the square root of five, and times x minus five. And you're going to have to FOIL that. Now again, you should not end up Radi with radicals are just like eyes. You don't want to end up with eyes and radicals. They, they shouldn't exist when you start foiling that out. So you're going to try to triple foil, and I'm, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to set that up for you and make sure you know how to, to start it. Isn't a negative square root of 5 times a positive square root of 5? Isn't that just 5? Or negative 5, I'm sorry. Would you agree? Okay, because square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25, which pops out to be 5. That's what we learned about radicals. When you multiply it by itself, it pops out. So square roots go away. I am left with x squared minus 6x plus 4. Is that what you got? Okay, then just foil it with the x minus 5, and there you go. There's your number 6 once you're finished with that. Okay, I'm going to do 8 and I think nine, and the rest is for homework. It's, it's really just foiling, 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 foiling. And if you can do this, you will be good. Let me do eight. Um, I think I could do eight here. Find the polynomial of lowest degree having a leading coefficient of one, real coefficients with zero, with a zero of two, multiplicity two. Hmm. And a zero of two minus four i. With a zero of two, multiplicity two. Now we haven't learned about multiplicity yet. We're gonna get to that actually tomorrow. Literally tomorrow we're gonna do multiplicity. So I'm kind of giving you a big heads up of what multiplicity two is. What do you think? Well, what do you think multiplicity of two is? If you have a zero of two and then I said multiplicity two, how many of those twos do you think you have? Two. What if I said I have a two multiplicity three? How many twos do I have? Three, two, 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 right? Two multiplicity five, two, 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 okay? So that multiplicity really is the degree of that factor. So if I have a zero with a multiplicity of two, I would write it like this. X minus two with a multiplicity of two, I'd write squared. If it was multiplicity three, I'd put three. Multiplicity five, whatever, okay? What other zero do I have? Oh, so what do we write? X minus two plus four i, and then what's the other one? X minus four i. Have you guys realized the trick to these yet? Do you want me to show you these? I'm kind of I'm kind of embarrassed that you don't know how to do the tricks yet. We need tricks, tricks are fun. Can I show you a trick? If it's got an i, don't even worry about it except for the last one. Isn't that the only one? Isn't four i times negative four i the only way you're gonna get a whole number from it? So here's how I foil it, x times x, x squared, x times a negative 2 minus 2x. I don't even worry about the third one because there's an i. 
Then I do negative two times X is another negative two X. Negative two times negative two is positive four. And then I just do this last one. What does that make? Positive 16, doesn't it? X squared minus four X plus 20. There you go. And then what you would have to do here is you'd actually have to foil this out too, but I'm not gonna let you. I'm gonna actually let you stop right there because you have done enough foiling. Well, you will be doing enough foiling. But that would be, you'd have to foil these two and then foil it with that. Don't you love it? Remember when I forewarned you that this is all they do in my SBCC class at night? This is literally what we've been doing. We're foiling, 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 foiling. It's so much fun. All right, I know, it's challenging. Let's switch on over to here. This is now, we're gonna kind of switch gears. When they give us the zeros, we FOIL. But when they want you to find the zeros, you are factoring, right? Okay, did they give us a factor of it? Sure did. What are my three zeros right now? You should be able to read this right now from here, here, and here. What are my zeros? X equals negative two, or else? Positive three halves, you change the sign, yep. And then what's this one? Positive five, okay. You're gonna make three dots on the X axis because they're X intercepts at negative two. At three halves, which is one and a half, and at five. Okay. And then you're gonna make one more special dot and it's called the y-intercept. Anybody know what the y-intercept of this polynomial is? Take a wild guess what it is. 30. It's always the number that's by itself. If you plug in zero. So at the y-intercept, you're going to go right here. Okay, now, one more thing to talk about. A cubic function, how do all cubic functions start? Do they start down and end up? Do they both start up, up? Do they both end down, down? Or do they start up, down. Do you remember end behavior? What does it start? Up, down? Cubic function. Go to Miss, Miss Davis's just disco. So where am I starting? Okay, so we're going to start down and go through there. Go through that guy. Come back down. And then where do we want to end? You, my friends, just graphed your first picture without a calculator because you don't need a calculator. All you need are your x-intercepts, which are your zeros, your y-intercept, and to know the end behavior. This is what we do in calculus all the time. We look at a graph. We already know what it looks like. We can already cross things off. It's welcome to your next level. Woot! Isn't that great? You're excited. So ignore the multiple choice, by the way, on 10, because it's kind of rough. Um, all I want you to do is they already factored it for you. I want you to put it in your calculator and graph it for me. I really do, because this is going to help you with what happens tomorrow. So you can put this in your calculator totally. You can put this one or this one. It doesn't matter. Um, same thing here. Ignore the choice that cut, cut off anyway. Put this in your calculator. I want you to see what it looks like, but you should know where the zeros are right now. You should know where they're gonna be, okay? And then we're gonna talk tomorrow about what it's gonna look like. Number 12, I need you to factor because I wanna see if you know how to factor that one. And then 14 and 15 are also factoring, remembering if you you know paid attention to Miss Davis during the COVID. Why are we laughing? Because we knew it wasn't true. All right, this is all you have to do, and I almost did all of it for you. Sure. Bathroom. All right, finish that sheet. Evan, can you flick the light on for me, honey? Make sure everything is foiled and get it looking pretty for me. Thank you. You're the best. Let me pause it.